Now, the next question also goes to Pastor Fumi first. Should spouses disclose everything about their past to each other? Are there some past events that should better be left undisclosed? Wisdom is profitable to direct. <laughs> It's good to f have full disclosure, but there are some things that are better left mm. buried. So you need to know how far is far. Mm. You need to know what you should say. If you, I mean, what committed a spouse handle? take, what can he handle? You know, what can she handle? What, what can she? But I mean, wisdom is profitable to direct. In the moment when you meet people, you need to be able to. So what is the wisdom to be able to yeah. say this? Because people have said things that have ended up um, crushing the marriage. Hmm. which could have been averted if they didn't say it. So you need to know exactly what you should fully disclose. All right. Except if there is a, if the, let me say, except if there is a family meeting okay. where both of you said, let's talk about what happened in our past. Mm -hmm. And then the ground rules are, if I tell you judge that you. happened in my past, are you going to be able to handle it? Yes, okay. that's fine. But if you just say, I just feel like we just had a good sex. Let me tell you my past life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying things like, you know, you have a child outside when lock, you, it's, it's, you hide mm -hmm. that. No, no, that would be lying. That would be fraud. That would be getting married under false pretext. No. But there are some things that are better left not said. I don't even know what those things what are. are. So, but you need to know. So that's a tough one. But <laughs> I pray that the Lord will lead, lead each one of us. Yes. And, yeah, that's just it. Now, the next one goes and, to pass it to Sorry, let me just say this. Sometimes, you can't say those things at the initial stage of your marriage. You can say them Much 15, later. 20 years into marriage, when you have built trust, mm -hmm. when the person already has accepted you and said, what is the word that you ever, you ever did? Because as we grow together, our hearts get fused together. Okay. We get more forgiving of other people. And, and the I level of stakeholding yes. increases. So that, so that would help. So sometimes you allow, you allow for years and then now say, well, but there's something. Because really, there are things that you did that you have not spoken to your spouse about since 28 years of marriage. Okay. That are going to, you're, going to, you're going to tell them that the fifth year of marriage. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they have to wait for it. <laughs> Aren't those things, things that should have been talked about before the marriage? Before the marriage. It's not everything that um, people are going out are able to talk about. When you are going out with people, two things happen. If you go out for too long, you get tempted to begin to sleep together. So it's always advisable that you make your courtship as short as, short as, as possible. possible. If your courtship is short, you cannot have, you won't have been able to speak about everything that happened. Because most times you are thinking of, let's, let's come and see my parents. Let me go and take you to see my uncles. But then you go through the uncles and the aunties to introduce them to the well, married time is ready. But if I may say something, yeah. if I may add to it, if you willfully cover things that you're supposed to disclose, uh -huh. that's fraud. Right. So I, I think we should look at it that way. There are things that you need, you, you need to tell the person. Now maybe I'd been raped before. Maybe I'd, you know, aborted before. I think it's important to say those things because if they now have, you know, backlash, I'll find out. It will now be a case of, um, you know, um, um, you. I lost my trust in you because you lied to me. So I think we should look at morality. But there are a few things, you know, that I don't know how to that you may not need to um, talk about that is not necessary. There's really a lot of things. Yeah. There are a lot of things that people can either talk about or not, or talk, not about. talk about. I think it has to do with much more about how, by how much we might not talk about it. Affect affects my this spouse. relationship. Okay, if it doesn't, if it's not, like she's, my wife said, if you've had a child out of wedlock. You have to say you it. Don't disclose that. It's going to come back to bite you. Yeah. Okay. Or they've removed your womb, you yes. know, you've aborted, yes. and now yes. you're not yes. getting married, you're trying to have children, and the doctor says there's no womb there, mm. something has happened, and he says, what happened? Then that, that would be, that would be, that would be deceit. wrong. That would be deceit. Yeah. That so would be deceit. Right. Or a man, a man that is terror, mm. a man that cannot, um, have a, have a, and he knew, and he hid it until the marriage. Or you have sexual dysfunction. Yes, and you knew. Yeah. Erectile dysfunction, sorry. And, and the woman thought that, oh, he was just being a good Christian. That's why he didn't make any uh, sexual advances until the wedding. And I says, oh, now we're married. God hates divorce. I said, no, 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 no. God also hates lies. So what, what do you suggest? It's divorce immediately. Oh, yeah. because God hates the, divorce. He also hates lies. No, he also no, hates no, there, false there's no basis. There's no basis. That's, that's not the marriage. There was, that was deceit. Okay. 
Okay. That was marriage under false, yeah. under false pretext. So, so is that is that's, that's <laughs> coming the other person? Wow. They didn't come into that relationship with no. full, full disclosure yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir and ma. Now the next one goes to Pastor Toots. Right. How do you handle a situation where your spouse is not on the same page with you when it comes to the issue of child correction slash discipline? That happens in every home, <laughs> even our own. <laughs> because all of us train children from Our the way we were trained. And because we are different in the background that we had, okay, those things come back and we disagree on. But again, it's about communication. I feel that the children should wake up by 5 a.m. every morning. That is the way I was brought up in my home. Ah, I don't feel so. I feel they should watch <laughs> TV till Three. whatever it is, and then wake up whatever it is, and then whatever. No, those differences are there. But again, my wife said something that when two families, when, you, when two people come together to get married, they've come from different families. But they have to now have a decision and say, what do we want to do in this we want to adopt. Okay, in this family? And whatever it is they, dis they agree on, that is what they should implement in child and discipline the children. What is fundamentally important is that everything must be done from the place of love. Mm. Every discipline must not be done from the place of punishment, mm. must be done from the place of love. And when love is a guiding principle, we will get it right. Even when we miss it a little bit, we will get it right eventually. So I would say that every family, every couple, after, uh, every, every couple have to decide how they want to train their children. And I may just add in spe specific circumstances, when you know you disagree, please don't disagree before the children. Go into the room and then talk about it and then agree. The Bible says submit yourself one to another. Make sure you come, come out of that room with one position. And, you know, if you take that position, the other wife that they didn't take or the other husband that they didn't take their views should agree just for the sake of unity. Because if the house is divided against itself, the child will know. The child mm -hmm. will play you. And then they would all scam both of you. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that, you know, you submit to not all the things that you agree, but just for the sake of unity, then you should do so. So I hear Dad, tell mommy. Compromise. Dad, tell mommy. No, not to do it like to me. Well, listen to your mom. Even though you don't agree. Yes. You want the boy to play football. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're on holidays for God's sake. Why must they go in at 6 o'clock? But mommy says, come in. You cannot go in. Ah, sweetheart. Ah, let them play now. But you can't say that. Or you can't yeah. say, I overrule that. That is wrong. So you must always present a united front. A united, united front. front. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We so should be sitting down here. <laughs> Okay, that's a perfect summary. Yeah. <laughs> Present the United Front. Very Gradually, powerful. we're coming to the end of the question and answer section. So I have this final one for okay. both of you, but I'll start with Pastor for me. Okay. So, no, let me start. Okay. If you start with her, mm. she will say it and I'll just say I That is it. So, <laughs> that's fine. so let me give you the double whammy I mean, question, the double barreled question. So in what <laughs> situations would separation or divorce be recommended for a couple? And how can a spouse heal from hurts of sexual infidelity that occurred mm. many times, even though the offending spouse has asked for forgiveness? Well, I passed off answer that question. Ah. <laughs> well, you said you were going to start. Uh, uh, we are having a family conversation. Okay. I'm going to be very careful in an uh, answering these because if I say in the case of extreme abuse, you know, we actually get abused a lot of times. Verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, and all that. And sometimes we actually do get abused, you know, to the point where we are broken and we have to go to God for healing and for restoration. I haven't said that, though. Um, it is important for spouses to know when they are losing their mental um, orientation. When you're not coordinated anymore, when you're losing your, your, your essence, you should seek counseling and know whether you need to separate from that environment that is causing that. But that is not to say that every conflict, every uh, pain, every argument should lead to separation. In fact, those conflicts, those pains, those arguments, they toughen you and they bring out that soft part of you that is supposed to be thickened. So um, if there is no battering, there is your, your, your not emotionally damaged, you're not going into depression, you should persevere in that marriage to the point where you know you can get the help and the stability 
that is required. That means when life is not at risk. When, yeah, when, when life is not, no, when no life is not at risk. Life. But let me tell you, marriage threatens life. You see, because a lot, and I, I wish the single people could hear this, because a lot of times they're so eager and rushing to get married, thinking that, oh, and they live happily ever after, only in the movies. There is no marriage that doesn't go through tough times, hard times, that you almost despair. You almost say to yourself, what am I doing here? So that is not the time to actually separate or divorce. That is the time to say, Lord, let the weak say, I am strong. And the best gift, mm -hmm. the best gift to children is a gift, is of, the permanence. gift of permanence. Mm. Because that when you divorce and you separate, when couples stay together, whether it's through tough and through thick, the children see it, they get more emotionally balanced. They are able to they have hope issues for stability in the, in the future. They don't give up on things because Easily. they saw their children. And children are very smart. They see when mommy and daddy fight in the room and the voice comes out. They hear it. They, but they just but say, they pretend okay, that they they see that yeah. with what I have seen, this push will have packed. But you see, you see that you don't pack. Mm. They learn something about tenacity, about, about consistency, about, about endurance, long -suffering. about long suffering. So they take that with them into their career. They yeah. take that with them into their relationship. They don't give up on friends. things yeah. because it didn't work. Things. So that's a very gift. Permanence is a powerful gift. The best gift you can give to children in their relationship. Then you also talked about um, infidelity. You see, we say that time heals. Time, I mean, cures. Time doesn't cure nothing. Infidelity breaks trust. And the only way to have that trust restored is a, a, a contrary act, an alternative act, you know, like coming full disclosure, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm women... And fruit of repentance. That's what I'm saying. The Bible says you bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. You should, dis you should come and show that you're sorry. But when you say, ah, big deal, you know, you too. You, I mean, you look at you. When we got married, you were size 12. Now you are 22. What do you expect me to do? You know, and all that. You, you, that means you're not showing any remorse. So, but if the man has apologized and he is not doing it again, I plead with that woman that asked the question to please forgive and ask God to heal you. And if it's also a woman, because a lot of times we talk about when the man cheats, yeah. women also cheat. The woman could have cheated because, you know, she was vulnerable, she met an old uh, boyfriend, mm. or it was a, a low time of her uh, life at that point, and she mistakenly, I know of a woman, that slept with the best friend of her husband because the husband relocated and wouldn't come back on time. And she was just, you know, despondent. She was just weak. And she cried out. But today, 30 years, 20 years after, she's a fantastic woman mm -hmm. just because, you know, the husband forgave. So we can forgive infidelity if there is true repentance. Right. And if you're still struggling to forgive, ask God to help you. Okay, and don't keep doing the wedding anniversary. I mean, don't bring in up the anniversary of your mm. infidelity. I remember 1982, you slept with Titi. 1997, you slept with Joke. Uh, 2000, and, uh, uh, no, now you just give yourself hypertension. So you can actually overcome it and you can actually forgive. And when that spouse actually sees true forgiveness, it sometimes helps them to adjust quickly, except, of course, if they are perverts or, you know, sworn adulterers. I would believe that anybody who slept with teaching in 1982 mm -hmm. and slept with Josh Jolla in 1985 mm -hmm. must be a serial adulterer. <laughs> <laughs> so, what person, should, so what should we do? That person has broken covenant with the wife of his youth or with the husband of her youth, <laughs> okay? And under God, in sexual relationship, in sexual adultery, there is no more covenant because it's a blood covenant. But what about culture that tells the woman man no, no, we're not culture, no. No. We're about, uh, They tell women in the Iraq or in a man a man can do it. Like you said, just women overlook to, it. Women to do women to uh, No, one women. out of a thousand yeah. wi so, women. So it happens. But, but men, men do it. No, but we're talking about a serial sexually. So should the woman sense. should the woman stay there? I am saying as a minister of the gospel. Okay. What the Bible says is no divorce except on the ground of sexual, of sexual immorality. immorality. Biblically speaking, when a man or a woman, okay, goes and stays with another person, okay, mistakenly, <laughs> they, they, if they repent, the spouse has a response to accept or not or accept. Not. It is not mandatory 
that the spouse accepts them back. Mm. Okay? Because they've broken covenant. But if the person decides to accept him or her back, then that is mercy. Yes. Okay? And that mercy, that covenant needs to be re 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 reenacted. But if the person is a serial, if the man is a serial adulterer, slept with the house, slept with that person and keeps saying, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> that, okay, is a pervert and we have to say what it is, what it's like because a lot of people are doing it. Culture is saying women forgive. It is unacceptable for women to forgive. It's unacceptable for a man to overlook it if he's a man. A, bro a covenant has been broken. The proper thing in God must be done. It cannot, con it cannot continue. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry I had to be straight ahead on that, okay? Because people say these things, okay, well, you two, you did it. Okay, you two go and do your own, you know? No, uh, no. You know so it's, it's, it's not my, it's not like, okay, uh, you two go and do your own. That is not issue. No, is covenant has been broken. There's no justification covenant for sin. Covenant has been broken. You can't tell me, I have, you give me liberty to go and sin too. No. Because you want to justify your own sin. No. There's no right way of doing the wrong yeah. thing. Okay, because if you die in sin, you're going to die and go to hell, mm -hmm. clearly. And yeah. sexually immoral will not inherit, inherit the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. So... So let's let's play around around around, around the issue of sexual it's one I, of the it's one of the it's one of the one of the most terrible sins because every other sin Jesus said every other sin is outside the body the sin of sexual immorality is, is against, against the body. Now we live in a sex world we are mm -hmm. sex cells, and that is the greatest problem most people have now, easily fall into sexual sin, man or woman, but it's wrong, it's ungodly, it is a bait of the devil, don't bite it. And I want to say something, even in the church, because no one is saying it does not mean it is right. If you are in the church and you are engaging in sexual immorality, know that the judgment of God will come. If you have that weakness now, please call for counseling. Okay, there is no justification for sin. What happens when a woman earns more than, or when the wife earns more than the husband? How do you handle that? Okay. Earning more in the marriage, it goes back to the same thing we've been saying about husband and wife coming together and having a sovereign national conference. How do we run the finances of this home? Before now, you know, typically most, I mean, the, like our parents, the fathers earned more than the, 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 our mothers. And so the fathers were the ones that did the capital expenditures and the women did the, like the day-to-day -day running. But now, women are earning more. And when those men were earning more, they actually call the shots. They dictate the pace. They determine how things were done. So now women are earning more in some cases. And they say that the model that we have seen is that the man you know, gives the direction because he was earning more. So I should give the direction if I'm earning more. But I want to say this. So that's the issue of breadwinner. So the woman yes. is the breadwinner now. Yes. So I, like I, I, want, I, want, breadwinners before. I, I want to say this, and because we are also going to be raising children, the issue of building a house, sending children to school, they all have expiry dates. One day, those children will be out of school. One day, that house will be built. So I think husband and wife should sit down together and agree as to how the resources of the home will be done. Also, how the domestic chores will be handled. Because the painful, the sore point for women is, I earn money. I go to work early, I come back late, and I still come in to clean the house, to wash, to do the laundry, to do the dishes, you know, and all those things. And the man sits down. Sometimes the man has lost his job, and he does nothing all day, expecting the woman to still come back home and think, and, and, and cook. So I think husband and wife should, from the day, first day of the marriage, divide all the chores in the house cleaning dishes is not gender specific making money is not gender specific so how do we handle laundry how do we handle you know car washing how do we handle school fees how do we handle house rents should be agreed together and then we move on as one family the issue is remove culture the bible says there is one thing that makes the word of god of none effect says the tradition of men as long as you allow tradition to be directing you you will not listen to the holy spirit so that is why the issue of men and um, women earning more comes in because will you stop your daughter from earning more if she gets a good job and say no don't take that job because your husband is taking this job so this is what you should take we're not going to do that so we should work together in harmony. And for those of us who are working with women and helping them pivot in leadership, one of the things I advise them is the future is looking very bright for women. For women. Yeah. 
Why does literature look bright? Any any way you can have can grow capacity, you are going to grow your income. Mm -hmm. Women are growing capacity, mm -hmm. whether it's in getting to educa education, whether you get whatever it is. So once your capacity is scaled scaled up, you are going to scale up your income. Mm -hmm. Now, men are uh, the society is discovering, sadly to say, that. They can't depend on a man to be with you on your own. So the more company. women so, are getting the so big men jobs. Are, companies are not hiring men. They are hiring more, more women. women. As more women are getting empowered and having more finances, they are going to have husbands who won't be able to get a job. Mm -hmm. That's the truth of the matter. Women are getting smarter. Women are women are committed to to seeing things through. Is the way they make it. So the women folk are gonna are gonna have more economic power. And if you if you're trying to if you if you doubt it, check out America's vice president. Mm. That's never happened. That is history right there in your face. We're gonna have a lot more of that happen. We're gonna have a lot more. Now, so we're gonna get we're gonna get ready. We have to get ready to see more second gentlemen. Mm. <laughs> and the men have to be you know that is they the have to be comfortable in that. All right. Because I don't think that the problem really is with who brings in the money. I think the problem really is with selfishness and pride and say because i bring in more money i'm better value than you so i think that was the mistake the men made exactly that economics means i'm more value than you yeah but there are many things in life that are not economics that are still okay. value who gives you peace who supports you in your enterprise mm -hmm. You can't pay for those things. Mm -hmm. They are not commodified. They're not. They're but not. But their value, value of relationship and community, peace of mind when you, when you are at home with your children, mm -hmm. okay, you can't value them. So the world has to stop putting premium on economics. On just money. Okay? That's the truth. And I want to say that to women, okay? The men missed it. You are having the opportunity now. Don't, Don't miss, miss it. it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I think we should end so, on that note, you so, know, that husband and wife should understand that roles are subject to change. Mm. So you shouldn't define, you know, the vision of your home based on roles. You know, so you should look at it based on, you know, reality and more importantly, on the fear of God. Today you may make, bring in the billions. What happens tomorrow? So be careful how you comport yourself. Have you enjoyed this time with us? You should watch out for more things that are coming your way. Watch out. I'd like to thank Pastor Fumi. Thank you. For thank you for thanking me. Segment. Thank you so much, Pastor Tukumbo, for thank the you. words of wisdom. Thank I pray you. that the Lord will continue to bless you yeah. and your anointing will continue yeah. to increase. Amen. Thank you. Wow, I think that's a tremendous time we've had together just talking about relationship and finances and vision and how to make a life even better in these days of crisis. I want to say to you that your best is yet to come. God has a plan for your life. Stay connected with us on all our platforms and uh, come drink with us what we are drinking from the source of all things, which is God himself. I look forward to seeing you again. Again, my name is Beulah Tokumbo Johnson and I have the singular honor of being the senior pastor of the Capstone Church Without Walls in the city of Lagos. We love you. We're praying for you. Let me say this before I close. That in this new season, I ask the Lord to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And if there be any area of your life where you have been accused by the enemy, I declare today by the authority of God, you are forgiven. A new start comes upon your life and God gives you a brand new opportunity. It's well with you. Go, succeed, go, enjoy your life because God has given you everything in Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.